Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanuka broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from French to English. Be blessed. Today's Friday. As you know, on Fridays I like to talk to you about repentance and preparing for heaven. It's very important to remember that heaven is real. We're here on earth, but there is a heaven that God has prepared for all who believe in his son, Jesus Christ. Heaven is there, and it's prepared for those who will believe in Jesus. There is only one way, one path to heaven, and that is by believing in the name of Jesus. No one knows when they will die. You don't know when you'll die, but one day you will leave this body, and you need to be prepared. Among those who are listening to me right now, some will have the grace to remember these words when they are on their hospital bed. I've learned that some have passed away, but before they died, they remembered these words and took the time to repent and accept Jesus because they knew the truth. Before, they didn't want to repent, but when they realized they were going to die, they repented. I know people who left this world in that way. They remembered these words. They had the opportunity to repent. Those people, they had that chance. They had the grace to repent before dying. But are you sure that you'll have that opportunity? You hear these words every Friday, but you're not repenting. And yet, you don't know when you will leave this body. That's why it's so important to be ready every day. Don't say, I'm young, because even if you're young, even if you're strong, you don't know how many years you have left on earth, and you don't know when Jesus will come to take his church. So, you must always be prepared. You need to be sure that if Jesus comes back, or if you die at any moment, you will go to heaven. That is the best guarantee you can have on earth. Some people have guarantees of wealth or material things, but the best guarantee is the guarantee of going to heaven, not because you're good, not because you're perfect, but because you are forgiven and justified by the blood of Jesus. Today, we're going to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. This is a verse that some people ignore because they think that the important thing is for the soul and spirit to be sanctified. But this verse shows us three things that must be sanctified. When Jesus comes, he wants to see three things sanctified. The verse says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the verse talks about three things, the spirit, the soul, and the body. Even the body must be sanctified. Let me first explain what sanctification means. What does it mean to be sanctified? To be sanctified means to be set apart. When the Bible talks about the saints, it doesn't mean perfect people. It means people who are set apart, people who have accepted Jesus. Because from the moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are set apart. You are different from others because you no longer rely on yourself. You no longer rely on your money, your strength, you rely on Jesus. He becomes your master, the Lord of your life. That's why Christians, those who are saved, are called saints. And if your body is sanctified, it means that your body no longer belongs to you. This is very important. Many people say that God doesn't care about the body, but the Word of God shows us that when Jesus comes, even the body must be sanctified. We're talking about three things, the spirit must be sanctified, the soul must be sanctified, and the body must be sanctified. Don't say that your body belongs to you because your body is the temple of God. You can't do whatever you want with your body because your body belongs to someone else. If you rent a house, the house has an owner, and you pay rent to that owner every month. The owner of the house has the right to do what they want with the house. They can change the rooms or even tear down the house because it belongs to them. But you don't have the right to destroy the house or change its design because it's not yours. So when you do whatever you want with your body, it displeases the owner of your body, who is God Almighty. Your body is the temple of God. When you engage in fornication or adultery as you please, you are damaging God's temple, and God is jealous. Don't do whatever you want with your body. Sanctify your body. Let this body be set apart for the glory of God. Sanctify your soul. Your soul includes your thoughts, your emotions, everything that makes up your soul must be sanctified. Your thoughts must be sanctified. Your words must be sanctified. Your decisions must be sanctified. That's what Jesus wants. All of you who are living in sin, this is the moment to repent. There are two young women who have had multiple abortions who are listening to me right now. This is the moment for you to repent and accept Jesus as your Savior. There are wives who are cheating on their husbands and husbands who are cheating on their wives. Repent and accept Jesus. Even you, who say everything is going well in your life, that you have everything you need, you're still missing one thing, you're missing Jesus. No matter how smart you are, get on your knees and call on Jesus to come into your life. Men who sleep with men, women who sleep with women, couples who live together without being married, this is the moment to repent so that you can have the guarantee of going to heaven. Get on your knees and call on Jesus. If you need the assistance of a servant of God, you can give us a call at plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.
We're now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the book of Nehemiah, which we started on August 19th. If you're new to the Kanguka broadcast, it would be best to check the archives and listen to the teachings from the beginning because we've already covered a lot. We're still in chapter 6. I've spent more time on the first six chapters because what happens in these chapters closely mirrors what we're experiencing in the church today. We've talked a lot about the spirit of Tobiah and Sanballat. I mentioned that while Tobiah and Sanballat themselves are long gone, the spirits that work through them are still at work today in much the same way. There are two unmistakable signs when we talk about the spirit of Tobiah and Sanballat. As I mentioned, this often shows up on social media. The first sign is that someone with the spirit of Tobiah and Sambalat will insult nearly every servant of God. You'll notice that they attack everyone, all the ministers of God, to the point where you might start wondering if there's even a single true servant left. Why do they behave this way? Because their mission is to find fault in every pastor or church. And let me tell you right now, no church is perfect. No pastor or servant of God is perfect. But someone with the spirit of Tobiah and Sambalat will actively seek out the flaws and expose them on social media. This is the opposite of what the Word of God teaches us. We're not called to expose our brothers but to love them, to pray for them, and to counsel them if necessary. When you expose a brother, it's a sign of a lack of love. But the people who do this are not interested in love. They are driven by the spirit of Tobiah and Sambalat because their goal is to stop the building of the wall, in other words, to stop the work of God. The second unmistakable sign is that those with the spirit of Tobiah and Sambalat do not preach the good news. They have no message of their own. Their entire work consists of taking videos, cutting a few seconds or minutes of footage, and then commenting to prove that what was said is wrong. That's all they do. They work by criticizing the preaching of others. They use the work of others because they have no message to preach themselves. That's how you can recognize someone with the spirit of Tobiah and Sanballat. But why do they do this? Why do they spend so much energy slandering God's servants and spreading all these accusations? First, as I've said before, they do it for money. Those who do this on YouTube are after money. They want fame. They want lots of views. That's the first reason. The second reason is that they want to stop the building of the wall. In other words, they want to discourage the servants of God. They want you to stop preaching, to feel embarrassed or ashamed, and especially to waste time explaining yourself in response to their accusations. On one hand, they want to destabilize God's servants, and on the other hand, they want Christians to become discouraged and leave the churches. When people leave the churches, they are pleased, it's Tobiah and Sambalat's victory. Their aim is to discourage you from listening to the servants of God. They'll try to convince you that God's servants are bad, that they're liars or even Satanists. Everything they say is designed to stop the wall from being built. But I really appreciate how Nehemiah understood all of this. And today, we'll see that he completed the wall despite the opposition, despite the attacks from Tobiah and Sambalat. And you, servant of God who's listening, don't stop building. Don't stop preaching. Continue doing God's work. No matter what people say, don't give up. Yesterday, I shared an important verse with you. We read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 16, which I love because it says that those who slander you will be put to shame when they see your good conduct in Christ. Why will they be put to shame? Because they won't understand how you keep going despite the attacks, despite the insults. They insult you, but you keep going. They slander you, but you keep going. They say all sorts of things, but instead of stopping, the work continues. Souls keep being saved. Testimonies keep coming in. Nothing changes. The work goes on. The wall keeps rising. When the wall continues to rise despite the insults, Tobiah and Sambalat will be put to shame. Servant of God who is listening, you are not what people say about you. If you're not a Satanist, you won't become one just because someone says you are. If they call you a liar, but you know you're not a liar, let them talk, but keep building God's work. The problem arises when what they say is true. If they call you a liar and you actually are a liar, then that's an issue because, over time, people will see that what they're saying is true. But if it's not true, over time the Lord will prove it's false, and He will vindicate you. Those who insult you will be put to shame because their plans will have failed. I love verse 15 of Nehemiah chapter 6. It says, So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul, in 52 days. Despite the attacks, despite Tobiah, Sambalat, and their team, Nehemiah completed the wall. Glory to God. In other words, they wasted their time. God willing, will continue next Monday. Have an excellent weekend. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus 2567813773337.